Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about test analysis and design and today we shall be looking at some of the sample questions from this particular chapter as well. Well, so we have discussed a lot of questions respective to each technique in their respective segment itself but thought of like covering some of the experience based test techniques right when it comes to this particular section of it. So let's quickly have a look on what other questions we can get when it comes to the experience based test technique or other different varieties of questions than the one which you need to solve. So the very first question on our screen is related to experience based test techniques and it reads as which of the following is a characteristic of experience based test techniques. Now remember team whenever such questions are asked to you, you need to first of all recall all the knowledge, all the information, what you have in your mind about that particular context. Because options can be driving you crazy at some point of time and we don't want you to get confused and get tricked away by that particular concept, right? So first, before you start looking at the options in such straightforward questions from this chapter, you should start recalling, okay, what do I know about experience-based test techniques? And like this is based on the past knowledge, the testers intuitions and few other things like that. OK, so again, I'm not basically letting you know the whole tutorial once again, but I'm just trying to tell you that what exactly should be the approach. So let's look at the option now, given that we have the context in our mind that what is experience based test technique. The option A here reads as test cases are created based on detailed design information. You very well know that when it comes to experience based test techniques, it completely depends on past experience, domain knowledge and knowledge of typical defects and the intuitions, etc. Thus, detailed design is going to be more formal technique like white box test techniques. So it does not apply right here. So let's see option B. Option B says items tested within the interface code section are used to measure the coverage. Now, I think this is more related to the code coverage that is statement coverage, decision coverage, etc. Thus, this also does not meet the expectations of experience based test techniques. Moving on to the third one, the CE says the technique heavily rely on testers knowledge of the software and the business domain. Now that's one the absolutely what talks about experience based test technique category that someone really has to have a good experience of testing similar products and having the domain domain knowledge of the business. But what is D? So D says the test cases are used to identify deviation from the requirements. Uh, however, that statement does not make any sense when it comes to techniques because test cases are meant for uh, observing the deviations from the requirement. That's generally testing, but it's not a technique. Even if I relate to requirements, requirements are basis for black box test techniques. So I think that's how you make it very clear and very confirmed that your right answer here is C. That is, the test techniques heavily rely on testers' knowledge of the software and the business domain. So let's look at the next question here, which is coming in from the same chapter. That is, your test suite achieved 100% statement coverage. Now, what is the consequences of this fact? Now, I think that sometimes looks very weird, very, very confusing that, hey, what was the question all about? So all we are trying to say here in simple words that you tried statement testing on a particular code and your statement testing with the number of test cases what you got has already achieved 100% coverage. Now what is the consequence of that is totally dependent on the options again. Here the context recalling may not be required. Here you need to judge by reading the options that what are they looking forward to because there are no such consequences when you have 100% coverage achieved. That is what the key expectations, but still to make sure that what exactly they're looking for, we have to be options driven here. So make sure that you read the options very carefully word by word so that you don't get confused or lose the grip on what exactly is being asked. So let's quickly see what are the options we have. So option A here says each instruction in the code that contains a defect, defect has been executed at least once. Now that's the straightforward definition for 100% statement coverage. That means all the statements have been tried out. See, whenever you achieve 100% statement coverage or 100% decision coverage or branch coverage, it all means that every single node or every single branch has been tested completely. That means it is being tested. So all we achieve by having 100% coverage being done is testing every single part of it. 
So from statement, we talk about the nodes. So that means all the nodes have been tested well. So looks pretty good, but still cross check with BCD. So let's go with B. B says any test suite containing more test cases than your test suite will have also achieve 100% statement coverage. Now any test suite containing more test case than your test suite will also achieve 100% statement coverage. Uh, do make sense to a certain extent, but uh, not absolutely uh, meeting the expectation. See, coverage certainly depends on what is being tested, not on the number of test cases. So I will have to have all those factors being included when I measure that whether I write five test cases or 10 test cases, it does not really mean that you have achieved 100% coverage. So having test written does not make any sense. The count of the number of tests does not matter. The matter is every single node or every single statement has been tested at least once or not. So let's see option C as well. And the C option says each path in the code has been executed at least once. Now what's wrong with this? If there is a loop in the code, now there may be an infinite number of possible paths. And I, I just don't talk about that as a you know purpose when it comes to statement testing or statement coverage. So, so if it is not, it is certainly not possible to execute all the possible paths in the code. Because say, for example, if there is a do while or there is a for loop of 100 iterations, then I just don't write 100 test cases to do that, correct? So checking every single iteration. So I will have to have randomly selected two or three values and then check that the loop works fine. So in that context, option C does not meet the desired expectations. That is, each path has been executed. No, this is not path testing. Of course, we do have a coverage uh, or technique related to that called as path testing. But uh, this one is statement testing. So see, you don't get driven away from the topic, what they're talking about. Okay, let's look at the one and that is D. That is every combination of input values has been tested at least once. Every combination, okay, is exhaustive testing. And if you remember back from the chapter one, the principal said that exhaustive testing is impossible or impractical to be conducted. And in that context, the option D doesn't make much sense, right? So I can easily rule out the option D because that's contradicting with the principle number two, exhaustive testing is impossible. So put together, the right answer here is A, that is each instruction in the code that contains a defect has been executed at least once. So it's not about the path, it's not about the combinations, it's more about each statement, each instruction has been tested at least once. Let's quickly look at another one here. And uh, that's question number three, reading it as which of the following best describes the way acceptance criteria can be documented. The first and foremost thing to remember from here is that you should know what is acceptance criteria. Of course, recall everything about it. And second, the word best is a catch for you at this point of time because there might be conflicting answers partially correct answers and that's the reason they use the word best so whenever you see the word best prepare your mind that you may have conflicting answers or partially correct answers so never get influenced by them rather spend your time getting to the conclusion by reading the full option and then making a decision what should be the right most answer okay so let's look at the option a option a says uh, performing retrospective to determine the actual needs of the stakeholder regarding a given user story I think there's a conflict right here at the screen. It says retrospectives are not something what we use it for determining what should be written in the user story. However, retrospectives are used to capture the lessons learned and to improve the development and testing process, but not to document the acceptance criteria, correct? So it's, it's a very simple and straightforward thing. If you know what is retrospective in the syllabus, you know exactly what to answer for this particular question. So retrospectives are not something which determine how to write acceptance criteria or how to improve your user story writing. Rather, it's more about lessons learned from the exercises which you do in the sprint and try to improve it right from the upcoming sprints. So A certainly is not the answer. Let's look at B. The B says using the given when then format to describe an example test condition related to given user story. I think uh, if you remember, we had two different ways to write acceptance criteria. One was just to write pointers, that is number system, like point wise, bullet wise, you can write the acceptance criteria. And second was given when then. Now given when then was one of the format with a Gherkin, Gherkin language to be used in order to define the acceptance criteria. 
So that makes a little bit sense, but let's cross check with C and D. Option C says using verbal communication to reduce the risk of misunderstanding the acceptance criteria by others. Again, see, it's though Agile says we look for minimal documentations, people may get confused here if you're not prepared well. But if you're prepared well, you know that. However, we prefer minimal documentation in Agile, but stories and acceptance criteria is something which is preferred documented. So verbal communication is not the best way to write your acceptance criteria. Okay, so let's move on to D. The D option says documenting risk related to a given user story in a test plan to facilitate risk-based testing of a given user story. Now, acceptance criteria are related to user story, not a test plan. So that's a conflict right straightforward there that there are two different things what is being discussed here. I'm not talking about risk-based strategy to be followed as uh, to be included in the test plan when we talk about acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria is more of a completion check for a particular story. And as far as we are talking about acceptance criteria, we are not worried about what approach you are following, how your plan is being written, what is your schedule, what are your activities, nothing. It's just that we are worried about how do you write your best acceptance criteria when it comes to your process, right? So in that context, I think put together, the right answer here is B, using given, when, then format to describe an example test condition related to a given user story will best describe the way acceptance criteria can be documented. Okay, so that's put together all we had from different point of view, some of the questions for you. However, for techniques, you already have the questions discussed in the outline of each topic. But still, if you have anything else, let me know. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.